Hi, everyone. I want to talk to you today about what I consider to be the most important topic for investors. That's something I call the price of admission. What is the price of admission? Well, put simply, it's the price equity investors have to pay in order to receive a higher return than safer competing investments. So if we look at the last 100 years, stocks have returned about 10% per year on average versus 5% for bonds and 3% for cash. And if you look at a chart like this, what you should be asking is, well, why is that the case? Why are stocks giving you this higher return? What's the trade-off? Uh, and what we find, the best explanation, the most intuitive rationale is that stocks are riskier investments than bonds and cash. So you're being compensated uh, for that higher risk uh, with that longer term higher return. But what is risk? And it's an important question to ask. And if you ask 10 different investors, you'll probably get 10 different definitions. Some people think of risk in terms of volatility, the swings up and down in the market. Others will talk about drawdowns, which is simply your portfolio going down in value from a high. And then lastly, people will talk about risk in terms of permanent loss, which is the something that you should fear because there's no recovering for that. So the extreme example would be a stock going to zero. So we have different ways to define risk, but if you ask investors, what do they fear most in terms of the stock market in the US, they will likely tell you an extreme example. And it's probably gonna be one of these years. So if we go back the last hundred years, there's many examples to draw from, but I think these would be the most front and center on people's minds. Uh, starting with 1929. So what happened in 1929? Stock market peaks. There's a very quick 50% crash. Uh, and then you have the Great Depression that follows. So from the beginning to the end, uh, the US stock market declined over 80% uh, during the Great Depression, uh, the worst period in history by far for the US stock market as a whole. After that, a lot of people will think about crashes. So Black Monday in 1987 comes to mind. Stocks are down sharply in a single trading day. Uh, so that's very fearful, and that's something that invest, all investors think about, the risk of a crash. Uh, then you have 2000, a different scenario. You have a huge equity run-up in the 90s. You have a dot-com bubble. Uh, markets peaked in March 2000, uh, and it took a few years before they bottomed in October 2002. By that point, the S&P is cut in half, and the NASDAQ 100 and tech stocks are down over 80%. After that, financial crisis, 2008. Uh, you have a, re a bad recession. You have the S&P 500 down over 50% uh, to its low in March 2009. Many securities down more, a lot of bankruptcies, a lot of hardship, a lot of fear. Uh, the most recent example we have would be 2020. Uh, so the early stages of the pandemic, stocks just went straight down. People thought it was going to be a another Great Depression. Uh, and you just had an extreme panic in a short period of time. So these are all extreme examples. This is, if you ask investors, what do they fear most? They'll probably tell you one of these periods, but the truth is that risk in the stock market isn't limited to just extremes. It's always there, even if you can't always see it. Risk is always present. And so we've had a, a pretty good run here since March, 2009. S&P 500 is up over 800%. Uh, uh, since that point in time. And some investors would counter and say, well, isn't this a smooth ride? Isn't it an easy ride? Uh, what, how could this be risky? Uh, but if you zoom into any one of these periods, those little wiggles on the chart uh, were very fearful uh, for investors. So during this period of time, we had a number of corrections. We had a few bear markets, uh, it, you know, even though it looked to be, appeared to be easy, uh, from point A to point B, there's a lot of volatility in between. And if we look at any given year in the S&P 500, there's always risk. There's always going to be a drawdown. So last year was a pretty mild year. The S&P was down only 5% from peak to trough within the year. Uh, but a more typical year, you see more pain. So if we're going back to 1928, the average year is down around 16% peak to trough at some point during the year, median year around 13%. And what we find is roughly every other year, you see decline of at least 10%. And a 10% decline when you're living in that moment can be fearful because you don't know if it's going to be a bigger decline or it's just going to stop at 10%. Uh, so that risk, that fear is present in every single year. So what we find is that risk isn't limited, though, to a single year. You have 
periods like bear markets that could extend over multi-year periods. And how often do these occur? How often should you expect them? Well, the averages that we've seen in the US anyway, is about once every four years, you see a 20% decline in stocks. And if you see larger declines, uh, they're gonna be less frequent, but if you're a long-term investor, it's really a question of when, not if, that you're gonna experience one of these declines. It's a feature of the equity markets are bear markets, they're going to happen. So here's a list of bear markets going back to the, the 29 uh, bear market, which was the worst in history. And you can see uh, there's no real rhyme or reason. There's no pattern. And although they happen once every four years on average, it isn't exactly four years. You can go long periods without them and then you have a, a lot in a short period of time. Uh, there's really no predictive uh, way uh, to think about bear markets. And just because we had one in 2020, it doesn't mean it's going to be four years before we have another one. The second point an important one, I think, to think about when you talk about bear markets is uh, you don't need an economic contraction. You don't need a recession to have a bear market. Uh, the stock market is not the economy, and therefore the stock market is swinging on a multitude of factors. The economy is just one of them. And so when sentiment shifts, when sentiment gets more sour on stocks, when multiples compress, you can have a bear market without any economic contraction. And we've seen that a number of times in the last 30 years. We've seen it in 2018, 2011, 1998, 1987. And you go back in history, you find more of these. So uh, it's true that uh, recessionary bear markets are worse than other bear markets, uh, but you don't need a recession to have a bear market. Now, last year, 2021, this is a good example because this is going to happen from time to time. It, ha it happened in, in 2013. It happened in 2017, it happened in 1995. We have these years where it seems like the market is only going up, right? And people in early 2021, some coined the phrase stocks only go up. Uh, and it, it appears like uh, that's the case, that risk isn't present anymore. There were 70 all-time highs in 2021, which is the most since 1995. But again, risk is still there. And, and just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean it's been eradicated. And if we fast forward to today, if you're watching this in 2022, well, we've seen the other side of that. We've seen some risk come back into the market. We've seen a 12% uh, decline in just a few short weeks in January. And as we stand here today, we don't know if that 12% is gonna be the low, if there's gonna be a 20% bear market that it turns into or something worse. And, and that's okay if you're a long-term investor uh, because that's the price you're paying for that higher return. That uncertainty uh, that you don't know how large a correction is going to be, when it's going to come, and the volatility on that way, that long-term path is the reason why you're receiving that higher return and bonds or cash. So if we think about wealth, I think there's two ways to think about it. Uh, there's uh, the straight line road uh, to, to investing, uh, which is cash. You get to A to B. You know how you're going to get there. There's no drawdowns. The problem is point B is, is, a very, uh, is a very short destination. There's not going to be, you're not going to build wealth uh, by holding money in cash, or you're not going to build a significant uh, portfolio based on investing in cash. You have to take some risk. So the road to wealth in the stock market or other risky investments is not a straight line. It's a long and winding road. And so uh, it's, the, it's, it's the road from A to B is not going to be a straight line. You're going to have many corrections, many bear markets, many uh, periods of volatility and fear and anxiety. And that's the price that you pay for that higher return. There's no free lunch in markets. You don't get that higher return without higher risk. There's no upside in markets without downside. So embrace the fear, embrace the panic, uh, be happy that these corrections exist because without that risk, there would be no reward. So I want to end this with a quote, one of my favorite ones from Peter Lynch, and it was from a while back, but I still think it rings true today. And it goes like this, you get recessions, you have stock market declines. If you don't understand that's going to happen, then you're not ready. You won't do well in the markets.